say the status and the state of mind of one who has mastered obedience, one who tries to explain it always repents later because that is not enough. There are two aspects of Japji. One is to obey, the other is to listen. And just like that, Suniye Siddha Peer Surnaz, Suniye Tartaulakas, those who listen, they become the perfect, they become the Siddhas, they have the power of all the knowledge, and they know the heavens and the earth had just the same one aspect. So technically speaking, what Guru is saying is it's a mental attitude. If all of us, whatever our Guru, Sri Guru Gan says, start obeying, listening and obeying it, our life shall be perfect. There's no reason that we should be. Then question is, what stops it? What is the problem that we know what is right, our intuition in a very humble way says this is right and the aspect of life says this is right and we still go wrong. Because there is a tendency where you are right you want to be wrong also, where you are wrong you want to be right. The world, universe in a balance and if you do not create a neutral mind, a meditative mind just to obey and just follow the right lead, that is a conflict right there. To follow the consciousness or to follow the ego. They are in conflict. Everybody knows it. It's not that somebody has to worry about the facts. Facts are there. This is where the path, the reality which Guru Nanak tells us comes befitting to the man because this believes in the sovereignty of the man. Individual is sovereign. Individual not a byproduct of guilt. And some religions have laid it to the hilt. You are born in sin, you live in sin, you die in sin, you have to find something. Actually, we are not born in sin, and we are not going to die in sin, and we are not going to live in sin. That's not true. We are born in the image of God. We are born in the image of God's reality. We are born in the image of his ecstasy. We have earned this body, mind and soul. We have burned, uh, burned our karma. We have come here to test our karma. That is what humanity is to, supposed to be taught because that cannot be taught by religion. Because religion by force want to use people and royalty of the state and the religion of the time come into an understanding. Royalty told the religion will give you recognition and religion told royalty will give you a sport. And with these two crooked ideas of some people who believe in the goodness of the mankind as a king right, divine right of king started and religious became a in-between agent of the God. So what we did is that we took away God from man. And now we are taking God away from man for so many thousands of years, now telling anybody you are a God, he starts looking at it. Am I coming to a mental hospital? What's wrong with this person? How can I be God? My idea is if you are not God, then where is God? All the pigeons are going to tell an this is what they are going to say, God? Are the owls at night are going to go, 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 that is God? If humans are not going to be God, what God is all about? Because everything which God created works with impulse. You are the only creature, mammal, who can work with absolutely, with an impulse not at all, if you want to use consciously or intuitively, you can work. Your power as intuition is not a gift. It is your total reality. 
because between object and subject there is environments there is circumstances there is nature between high pressure and low pressure there is winds there are waves <clears throat> you cannot take it away if our satellite cannot mount is our wavelength then the meridians in the earth and the space they are millions they will bounce us our psyche has a bouncing power our own in our universe so every thought we create that thought has to bounce from the infinity in space or beyond space and come back and have to create a creativity that is why power of obedience is power of the law of unisonness with that specify order which is good for the person and that is not a guru and that is not a divine person who creates duality who tell you you are not god you're going to find god well that person has not found god himself that is the truth yes <clears throat> you can tell a person there is a god in you atma amyun brahm sadi your atma is god itself and is truth a person can be helped to experience that truth person can feel elevated exalted person can feel expanded and universal person can feel giving forgiving person can feel loving beyond senses it is 1995 28th 27th of august that's how it is and you still do not know love is beyond sensory system scientifically we know in experience we know love is beyond sensory system because love is an infinity infinity cannot come in senses moment infinity come in senses it has to die jo upjo so bins hai padyo kal ke paas anything which can come in senses has to die and love cannot die therefore love cannot come in senses love is beyond senses moment you bring love in senses it become a new sense and you can handle it then you start jumping like a monkey and you start bowling like a bear and you start howling like a dog and you like attacking like a hyena why your animal nature comes out <clears throat> why two lovers start fighting why two individuals start attacking why two individuals start insulting each other when we are all born in the love of unisonness of coexistence of the psyche in a macro and micro consciousness totally controlled by infinity there's no reason of hating anybody or anybody at all there's no virtue in it that's what guru says you are if you understand your principle you are god man tu jyot swarup hai oh my mind you are part of that infinite god you are body of that infinite god that's why guru said akal murat you are the pectoral god if a sick feels he is going to beautify himself he doesn't know what a beauty is his beauty is what god made him to be his job is to keep himself in that realm of consciousness in that that realm of physical experience that that is what rat mriyada is rat mriyada is not something which has been forced on us because we wanted to wear kacharas because at that time cloth was not available we wanted to buy turban because guru was running a boutique shop that's not true what is said is that your cranial adjustment cannot shift and it cannot shift to that extent that your psycho and your psychoanalysis in the brain your own neuron itself cannot act therefore let us come to a point to preserve it he said do sadhana mart vela sachna muh ke bolne boliye jisun tare pyar early in the morning through the tongue through the mouth 
just say those great praise words of the god the god should hear you out of love and then in the ambrosial hour nanak says if you do that praise of the greatness your greatness become confirmed on you nanak knows only this way then what you do you just enrich yourself in the morning and go whole day but whole day you have to face the ocean of psyche of psychoanalysis of people a people projection people wants demands negation positive ideas temptation god knows million things how are you going to deal with it you need the energy and you need a preserved energy that's why folks this seven yard and a yard and a quarter wide yamaka which you call these turban was organized by humans it was not a cloth shop which was put on our head and we are going to go crazy without it that's not true this was done only for that purpose that in the morning your riches your enrichment and your mental strategy and your focusing of the mind and your brain and your neurological communicative cells and your layers of all seven and 14 layers are interchange of the hemisphere be preserved in one unison and the 26 parts of the skull must not be allowed to move let the whole universe move but a person shall not move that is they call it paggadi and we pronounce it paggadi paggadi gadi means where you pitch fight gadi means which is fixed gadi means that little coat that little fort through which you just put in and set in and fight till death is called gadi paggadi pag means feet pag means feet paggadi you had your head is fixed from head to feet because all nervous system is controlled by neurological system of the brain and neurological system acts and reacts as your cranial adjustment stands that's why in the worst of the situation when lord krishna time came and his devotee got caught by this rakshasa this bad king he won't cut the hair from the sun center he said there was two punishments those days you get your hair cut you're free or you get your neck cut you're free there was nothing in between so these guys who surrendered they had to cut their hair they shave up their entire head but not the center they won't let it go and whenever your age come to a sensitivity that you start losing yourself without meditation and without other thing your hair on the top will start going check it out because so long the body create the pure protein and projection you are dealing with the universe and earth and heaven moment you start losing the sensory system you will find your hair from the head will start losing you one way or the other doesn't matter how many protein creams and how many massages and how many vitamins you take and people still don't understand why we have hair and this longest pure protein and most beautiful psychoanalytical power block and antenna when it's tied down it ties down all the 26 parts of the skull and does not let it move and there may be a possibility the hair not may we go loose we put a turban over it maybe sit till evening till i release you why this is my faculty of mind that's the way i want to work that's the way i want to go this is my day man is a conqueror of the time when time conquers man pain starts tragedy starts misfortune starts animal has a time too but that time is the impulse 
A cheetah knows cheetah is hungry. First is the animal. By impulse, it starts going to higher place. Either on the tree, or on the top of a hillock, or a mountain. Or in somewhere it has to put his head out enough to find out where the food is. To him, a gazelle is not a most beautiful, fantastic, jumping stuff. Seeding the earth. No. That's what these deers and gazelles and all these animals will jump. They put their paws on the seeds and put them into the ground so it can sprout. It's a natural farming system. That's why there are so many. But on the other hand, he knows that's my food. To him, it's not that pretty, little, beauty, bumby, not that stuff. To him, it's either his life or that. That's impulse. At 60 miles an hour, this shooting star goes, gets it, and that is his breakfast. Are you all animals? For your personal benefit and personal commotion and emotion, you just look around and say, that what I have to achieve. So long you follow your emotions and commotion, there's no difference between you, animal, and you. But if you call with your in intuition and your intelligence, you are totally different. Those who live by their intelligence and intuition, all needs come to them. Those who live by impulse, and by emotion for everything they have to go. That's a universal of law of God which God cannot help to change. Because one thing about God is it is unison. It's one law. One God, one law, one universe. You have the right to adapt. You want to be animal or you want to be great human. Impulsation of God is in the imputed, in the input of the likelihood of that you in your conscious. Why we come and bow to the Sri Guru Granth? This is our Shabd Guru. Because it has the word of directiveness in which our life can come out of our negativity to our positivity. There's no man here who has a stomach trouble. <clears throat> And one day, a, one man took six months' journey to meet his Guruji. <clears throat> Very happy, Guruji is there. I have reached now, now I'll ask him a question. And my problem will be solved. So at the gate, the gatekeeper said, Guruji has stomach trouble. You come tomorrow. So he came next day. Next day, next day, next day. Guruji's stomach pr problems became from bad to worse. One day he asked Sevada, what is this stomach trouble? Guruji has stomach trouble. He said, nobody can find it. Vaid has come, local doctor has come, healers have come. Nobody can find Guruji's stomach trouble. He said, can I see him? He said, who are you? I said, I am his disciple. He said, what do you know? He said, I adjust how to adjust the navel point. Maybe that's Guruji's problem. If you sneak me in, and I can take care of that problem, and Guruji gets all right, then he can answer my questions. He said, so be it, if you can really do it, but you have to just go, and we'll say you are a local healer, and then you have to do, you have not to say anything and don't indulge with him. He said, fine. So he went, he found Guruji navel is so tangled that it is impossible for him to ever recuperate. So he did all the adjustment and Guruji just had a sigh of relief and slept. So the next day he showed up on the door again and this Sevadar, he said, what are you here for now? He said, now I have to ask my questions. Is Guruji all right? He said, that's fine. Now Guruji was now stupid. When he went in, Guruji saw him, he's the same man. He said, hey, you are the healer. He said, no, sir, I have a question. I came six months ago 
I am around here for a long time. You have been sick and sick and sick. I have one question. That's all I came all the way. It took me six months to reach here. You were sick. I couldn't ask you the question. I knew how to adjust this naval point. And when I understood all the items of your sickness, I found it's very easy to adjust it. He said, what is your question? He said, why naval point goes off? <laughs> and Guruji said, one who does not unify the unisonness of the unity in the mind, body, and soul, and corrects all meridian points in the ambrosial hour, shall never have a meridian point of the navel intact, doesn't matter who he is. And I am a first victim of it. I know everybody knows, every car you cannot start when it's cold, every car, car needs servicing, every car needs adjustment, carburetor, this cleaning, that filter, that filter. You think this body, mind and soul doesn't have all those necessities? You have to have a change of oil. Why you change oil? If you don't change oil, all that what is comes in the oil becomes a filing system and car goes down the hill so fast that in a couple months you have nothing to deal with or start with. You all know all that. You see everything around except yourself. And then when you see yourself, you are not willing to recognize that God made you. You didn't make yourself. And God put up this machinery, and then the machinery has a book, Code of Conduct. That's called Rath Maryada. And it is written in structures. And it is for your infinity, because you are part of an infinity, and we call it Sri Guru Granth. And you said, what is written in this book? This is not book. This is your code of conduct from your finite body to merge back into infinity to which you have come from the divine. You live the finite. You get back into the divine. That's your privilege as a human. You are not born to suffer. You suffer. I agree with you because you have nothing to offer. God gives you everything. God offers you every opportunity. God gives you everything. You cannot get up in the morning in spite of the fact you know you're both in hostile work in the morning and it is nothing but a nightmare. Everybody knows. But at that's the moment. You put quilts and pillows over your head and you want to sleep. Everybody knows that both in hostiles work between 4 a.m. to 7 a.m., 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. Rest of the time, it's a proven medical fact, both nostrils don't work. They simply change their duty as the alternates. And in those hours, they become renegades. Left becomes right, right becomes left, S becomes mass, mass becomes S. Nobody knows what is going on with the human. And for lieu of that, whole night is wrong. In lieu of morning, whole day is wrong. If Guru says, Amrata Vela Sachna Vadeyai Vichar, Karmi Ave Kapada Nadri Mokh Dwar, Nanak Emi Janiye Sab Ape Sachyar, what wrong he did? Is he asking you commission? He's telling you where lies your power. And fact is, you are all power freaks. You all want to be excellent. You all want to be great. He gave you the method to great. He gave you technology to be great. He gave you the system to be great. When it's come to doing it, you feel yourself absent. It was very funny. I was sitting in the living room and there was a discussion going on. Should we decide rare ass or should we go to a movie? And I laughed, I said, you have put me in a very hard and rock place. This is not a question to discuss. Well, what is the alternative? I say alternative, it, some things do not have alternative. And just remember, those who have alter have no alternative. Those who have alter and try to have alternative, their life become a living hell. 
Alter has no alternative. And we are born to conquer time. We are not to be defeated by time. And that's why we are called Sikhs. That's what we have to learn. We have to learn to be one step ahead of time, rather time eats up up. We have come here to pay karma. I agree. That's why we have karma. When under karma, the karma is done, there is no punishment to it. That is why soldier in the fight put a gun on the shoulder, fires, kills, done. Nobody charge him. But if he does war crime, he is brought to trials. Because that is his ego karma. That is not according to the rules of the war. Even war where death is inevitable has rules. Therefore the law is those who have to rule have to obey the rules. If man has to not rule himself, man cannot rule his environment, man cannot rule the surrounding, man not, cannot rule others, and those should, one should not expect it. Therefore your presence, your ordinary self, and your greater self has to work. This work of self cannot be gained individually. Guru made it easy. He said, congregate. Let us get with all where we all be with the disciplined self or seeking to be disciplined self will go across. Our mind, our body, our soul will come to a unisonness and will go across. That's what Guru said. This is a practical way of life. It does not believe, I do not believe I am God, but I do believe God sits in me and works. I am the skeleton and I am the star of God. I am not God. And same way I see, I see the unseen working in the seeable scene of me. I am not the seer, I am seer when I see within me, he sees. He works. It is his word, it is his universe, therefore his word is dear to me. And that is to me is my Sri Guru Granth. Because it doesn't tell me anything about anything except me to me. And that is my power of the Shabd Guru within me. One day you all will be gone. Nobody will know you. Because you didn't obey. One day, some of you shall dedicatedly obey, and that world will never forget it. So, Guru Nanak words will come true. Let us chant. Maneki. Chalo. Ragis. On it. You know, the trouble is now I am teaching Gurbani extempore, not pre-privileged preparations. Proceed. Bake it. Na nehi kat ki kahi na jai ke kahi na na na, it's a very simple tune. Jabji is written in rhythmic. Manne ki gat kahi na jaye, jayko kahe piche piche. This is so simple. It's a double stroke rhythm, that's all it is. It's come from heart and heavens together. Manne ki gat kahi na jaye, jayko kahe piche piche. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Shall I get on the harmonium? Look at that, he's a Punjabi, he can do it. When his ego will be played, he will be correct. You see, this is how, <laughs> this is how you work. If sense will not work, ego will work. If ego will not work, command will work. Command will not work, push will work. The question is to work. Otherwise you are a jerk. Mane ki gat kahe na jai, jay ko kahe bache bachatai. Kaabe de kaab na likna haar, mane kaabe karn vichar. Jai, 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 Jai,
Now read all money ki four powders. Satnam ji. Thank you. Mane ki gat kahi na jai, je ko kahe pche pche tai, kaagit kalam na likna haar, mane ka ve karn nishaar, kaisa naam naranjan hoi, je ko man jane man koi, mane surit hove man bud, mane sagal pavan ki sud, mane mohe chut na kai, mane jam ke saat na jai, kaisa naam universal order and give you the benefits if you obey what you will get. There are four bodies on the, those who listen what they get. You just one day sit down with pen and paper, write down by obedience I get this, by listening I get this and count those virtues. After that please come and tell me is there anything left? I know many of you Get up in the morning, I know, I know, you have learned very well. But now, you read these eight powders, these eight steps given by Nanak, and find out what it says. Understand what it says. And write it down what it says. And write it down what it promises. If that doesn't happen, come, call me, collect. And after all those virtue, man doesn't need a thing. That I know. These eight steps, eight powders given by Nanak are promising which God has promised. I don't understand why we are suffering. It's not practical for a human to be born to suffer. Human has born to be happy. Human has born to be come from God, go through the finite passage of path and destiny and distance to be covered and back merge into the infinity. Come from purity, absolute purity, lives through absolute purity, merge with absolute purity, all provided. And the total science of it is in these eight steps. All it says is, listen to the wisdom and obey the wisdom. And you shall be wise. Don't fight it out. We cannot waste time. We cannot be conquered by time. We are born to conquer time. We are the hue of the man mental being now. Therefore, please understand, I am not saying your desires and wishes are going to end. I am not saying your thoughts and your needs are going to end. I am saying God is infinity. Let him provide it. I really feel bad to see you sweating and in pain and in insecurity, and in grief. It does not work. Let us pray to ourselves today. Let us change the attitude. Let us pray to ourselves. And let us pray that let us recognize ourselves and our unique 
power in this unique power our self our consciousness our karma will be gone and we can rise <coughs> phoenix can rise from the ashes and angel can start living in the human and your hatred your insecurity your negativity your anger your attachment your self abuse can totally leave you and where there is a purity that becomes the altar and where there is the altar there is always all universe serves it altar has no alternative but god and have you seen any altar made not of god call it anything but you all know this word is for the word of god and that is shabd guru your word is the word of your first life altar that is the your shabd guru there's no difference what nanak said what you said the days you will eliminate the difference that is the day you will become nanak and when you become nanak by the word of nanak that day the universe will be yours that's why nanak said satnam true is my identity true is my identity true is my god true is my identity true is my destiny Who is my journey? Who is my end? Who is my beginning? Because I am Mahakal, I am endless. That's why they say Sat Sri Akal. That's why they say Akal Murat. Mahakal Singh. Sat Sri Sri Akal. Siri Akal Mahakal Mahakal Satyanam Akal Murit Bhai Guru Sat Siri Siri Akal Siri Akal Mahakal Mahakal Satyanam Akal Murit Bhai Guru Sat Siri Siri Akal Siri Akal Something beyond death. Our life cannot be organized around death. All is not death. All is life. Death is just a deliverance to our higher self. We cannot make into an absolute fear that we cannot live with it, but we have to be a part of it. Every day we are not dying. Every day we are living. Every day we are not falling apart. Every day we are covering the distance of destiny. Every day we have come from God. Every day we are going to God. Take that attitude. See how journey become of life easy. Then you have a question: When people torture you, trouble you, tease you, why so? Then I have never seen a graduate who doesn't go for test. life is the test and triumph all people who work towards you as negative are just your test all positive thought of your grace is your triumph just understand if there is no minus plus cannot make the bulb lit light comes only when negative and positive use the filament that's your consciousness so let us from today turn the page of life to our own 
righteousness. If we do not know what our righteousness is, we can go to the Guru. That's between you and the Shabd Guru. And like Sat Simran, I have taken this hukam six times, it comes the same thing. I should take the seventh time. It came the same thing, then what should I do? Now what should I do? <laughs> now Sat Simran wants hukam, what she wants. I was on the telephone. I said, Sat Simran, if this gives you, this peace is going to give you six times the sake of them, seven times it may not change you. Can I try? I said, go ahead. <laughs> and she tried it with the same hukam. Because the mind and the psyche of the mind of the universe is the same mind as my mind, and my mind makes my hand work, and the same psyche works the same thing. Guru that they decided, Sat Simran shall have this hukam. Sat Simran wanted some little better than that hookah. <laughs> <laughs> and in spite of seven efforts, it didn't work out. What you can do? So Sat Simran said, All right, now it is a hookah, therefore I'll obey. <laughs> war was won, great war was done. Sikh has the right between Guru and his hookah. Fight it out. But if that doesn't change, then it's not going to change. Shabad is a living guru. Shabad guru is a living guru. It's not the ink, the paper, and the word. It is that word which moves the unisonness of the universe. And same words move you, your mind, your psyche, your reality, your infinity. And I tell you, Catch-22 is also responsible for your prosperity. Prosperity may be there as infinity. Purpose of life will not be fulfilled if you are not blessed with the word. And that nobody tells you. With all the wealth, with all the richness, these people are not fulfilled. Because their purpose is not fulfilled. That is where comes the touch of the word. And each one has a word. Each word of yours has a fact. Each effect creates karmi, apu, apani, genetic. These are words of Nanak. Therefore, you who walk unto the path of the Guru, are supposed to come from darkness to light, not from light to darkness. You are a god and goddess within. You are an angel and angelic within. You are infinite and infinity within. You are a purpose and prosperity within. You are always in bliss and blessing within. How can you enjoy the bliss if you do not bless everybody? You freak out, you egomanic little rats. You run away from forgiving, you run away from blessing, you run away from smiling. Run! Run into your holes! Run between North and South Pole! Nobody will give you shelter. Without altar there is no shelter. That is your take, that is your stability. That's your firmness. That's your anchor. And try to understand that anchor is within you. Bar tunde parampulai. Searching outside is just creating more doubts. Sab kuch tere andar, andar hi har mandar, kanu bar jame. All is in you, in you is God's temple. When you run around, this whole life you suffer. There are simple ways. What is the test you are great? 
when there is absolutely challenged by the smallness of the smallness if you show your grace that is your greatness that's your grace if you are unable to give you give forgiveness that is your greatness that is your grace if somebody is hungry and you have only one little piece of biscuit you give that you have conquered your hunger if you have little money and somebody has nothing you gave away that you know that the story of mine is very practical i used to work in a place where there was a very holy mother and i used to respect her i never knew america then so much i was very young and new and i never knew how this works one day i was giving a lecture and in that lecture half the money was to be given to me half the money was to go to the place where i lecture and then i was supposed to go to a dinner as a guest of honor i never forget that life i never forget that story i never forget that experience that day i remember i was given 120 dollar plus some money i don't know what it was in an envelope so i had that envelope with me and 120 dollars those days were a lot of money believe me then i was a guest of honor when i had this guest of honor was going in a slow speed talking left and right i saw a man with a very big electric pole saying my children also need food my children also need education my children need everything i didn't do anything with god i being blind from birth i am have a duty and the call of duty tells me to tell you those who have eyes give me something so they can also live my duty i'm doing my duty i'm not begging of you now i'm not asking you a favor i'm asking you to favor your eyes because i don't have them and those of you who have head of the family those who have eyes those who fear god please help me i went there and i will not uh, get it free there are pencils in this other bag you can pick according to the what you paid perhaps with that i will save some money that was his appeal i put that envelope in one of his bag and took what pencil out this holy mother got so angry at me she said you indians you always create beggars and sport beggars and you remember how much money was in that i said yeah 120 some dollars i know and you gave it all i said yes what you got in lieu of it i said this pencil what you do with the pencil i say i write with this pencil my destiny and destiny of all those who I'll touch including yours this pencil cannot write i said this pencil will write better than almighty god of yours she say i'll see to it there was that restaurant i went there first time where you take a plate and you move on and you put what you want and that was my first experience after india i have never had that idiot system in my whole life there was always i was served i was taken care of and all that and that was my first idea they gave me one napkin kind of rolled out in this perhaps there was that knife and all stuff and they put it on that plate and i start rolling that plate over those lines that iron bars and i started moving and unfortunately because i was discussing what we were the last so the guest went out and she did not pay for me she wanted to teach me a lesson how important money is but when she came to pay she was told it has been paid and she looked around who and he said no 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 please george please move please move and then i came and i whatever my food was she said it's kindly it is paid please go i said what kind of this business is where you take all this food and they said you are paid who pays go may i thought perhaps united states has this system to pay people who come here and something like that i never understood so i went on my table i kept my tray and i started try to eat 
and uh, one very jerking voice told me, no, no, take the food out of the plate and put it on the table and then eat. I said, well, I don't have any plate and I don't think I'm going to put my food on the table. I'm going to eat in this tray. And then the lady on the cash, she came back and she left some 60 some dollars in my tray. And I said, what is this? And he said, all these people who have come with you, there was somebody, your student here, he has left with me hundred dollars and said, all those who are in front of me, behind me, they are look like me or come with me as a batch, their food is being prepaid and the balance I should give it to you. I look at this wise, I said, what should I do with this money? She said, keep it. And I told the lady, I said, take this, keep it. She said, keep it. You keep it. And take this tray. She couldn't understand twice <laughs> that paper is printed in Washington somewhere. And God knows where it is printed. And God knows who wants it. And God is the distributor. She said, what do you mean by a distributor? I said, your car has a distributor, doesn't it? So God has a distributor. Didn't you see? This pencil will write the infinity of destiny. And I tell you today, there shall be no death. I'll write the destiny myself. This pencil is the holiest of the holy. What happened to this pencil, another pencil? I said, this pencil have a touch of a word and a prayer and heart of a man who was head of the family and who wanted only to be in grace. And this pencil, wherever it will be, what it will write will be a grace. Don't miss. God has many ways and forms and God has many tests. And let your ego never blind you. If you see, cannot see God in all, you cannot see God at all. Because it's one God who created the creation and the creatures. And it is His word. Therefore, Guru's words only guide you, remind you and tell you. That's why we bow to Sri Guru Granth. Not that we do not know other things. We bow and touch our forehead to say, if it is wrongly written, now write it right. And that is how God's will is prevailing. And that's how it shall prevail. And that's how man shall path on this path going. I know, painfully I know, you are by yourself. You are born by the Guru's words. I've been given a, some kind of a, a lie full credit that Yogi Ji has done a great work. Yogi Ji has done nothing. Yogi Ji has just come here and have survived because of your prayer and grace. I sit today at the first day of my life and I tell this in a very simple own words, truthfully. And even I am going to lie, it's going to be a truthful lie, that I have done absolutely, totally nothing. I believe in nothing. Shunya Omkar Shunyan Om Krishna Sayare Karam Janan Dharam Janan Aap Prabhu Parpare. I know those sutras are my previous lives. I understand. I have chanted them. It is my zero which will one will make a ten. It's not the ten which can make me zero. I am zero to begin with. Therefore, please understand, you, wherever you go, where you are, God has given you opportunity to be with that one God. And in that oneness, only the beauty you have to learn is to become zero. Within your zero, one will stand with you. That's the law of the one. And you shall be ten. Let the eggs hatch themselves and let the rooster crow. And let ever you know all the way, wherever you go, 
God go. You cannot. A vastaji na jai, nitr rakhar daro. This cannot be denied or separated. The atma, the soul, the God from you cannot be separated. Let your ego not make you blind. Is my prayer that your prayers will work through. And is my prayer all of you come with me because it is a call. I tell you something very positive. They are going to test us out. It is going to be the situation you can't believe. Because they have no purity, but they have majority. You understand what I mean? We are going to go through this cesspool, but just understand, we have to go through this cesspool to reach the nectar pool. And one dip and sip can give us clarity, superiority, infinity, purity, prosperity, and God itself. And then we'll be entitled to say, God and me, me and God are one under this moon and sun. And I hope you will come along, bear with me, and keep going the way you are going. Path is designated. Please keep up. One word I brought out of my insecurity. Whenever you meet me, I call you keep up. So I know I can, I have to keep up too. I keep up because you keep up. You keep up because I say so. So we are in very much in obedience and God will help us. Vai Guru Ji Ka Khalsa. Vai Guru Ji Ka Khalsa. Would the children please come up for their short program? Everybody join.
steady as stone, strong as steel, 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 steady as stone. We are the Kalsa, mighty, mighty Kalsa. Everywhere we go, people want to know who we are. So we tell them, we are the Kalsa. We are the Kalsa, mighty, mighty Kalsa. Everywhere we go, people want to know who we are. So we tell them, we are the Kalsa. We now have a story from the Kalsa Young Executives. I'm going to tell you the story of the king with the missing finger. There was a king once visiting a friend who was a prince from a neighboring kingdom. And they got to talking and the king started to admire a greatly beautiful jeweled sword that the prince was wearing. The prince told the king that it's not only beautiful, but it's also sharp enough to cut through steel. The king didn't believe this at first, so he told him to demonstrate. The prince gave him a steel rod raised up the sword and cut through the rod, but accidentally cut off one of the king's fingers. <laughs> a doctor was immediately called for and bandaged up the hand and everything was fine, except for the king was now minus one finger on his right hand. Later that evening, when the royal chief advisor came to see the king, he saw the missing finger and he said, it is God's grace, thank you, Lord. And with that, he left the room, took a bunch of money from the royal treasury and went out and fed the poor. When the king heard this, he was really, really angry, and he called the advisor. He asked him, why did you thank, thank God when, my, when you saw my finger was missing? He said, sir, it is the most beautiful thing that could have happened. Did you really go out and celebrate because of it? Yes, sir. This made the king even more mad. How could anyone be happy that he was missing a finger? Yeah. Take him to jail, they said. So they grabbed the advisor and dragged him off to jail. About three days later, the hand with the missing finger really started to hurt. And instead of reading the scriptures and meditating to take his mind off the pain, he gathered together a hunting party and went out hunting. After a while, they came to a beautiful clearing with a very beautiful deer in it. And the king was so intrigued by the deer that he started to follow it. And before he knew it, he was all alone in a dense jungle, didn't know where he was, completely lost. Soon it became night. And the horse he was riding stumbled into a deep hole and died of fright on the spot. So now the king was totally lost, totally alone, and on foot. So he wandered around for several hours. And after searching for his hunting party, but to no avail, he lied down and went to sleep. Little did he know there was a tribe of wild natives in the area. And they found, they found him sleeping and captured him. They tied him up and took him to their village and began to prepare him for a sacrifice. They took off all his clothes, they bathed him, they rubbed paste made from special leaves and roots all over him, and put him in, put him in a cage for the night. When everyone else was asleep, the king started to think, my God, I'm king of this whole area. I have a huge army and I could easily destroy this whole village and burn it to the ground. Look where I am now. When the, when the sun started to come up and he heard the drums beating, he knew he was lost. And nothing could save him now, so he thought, well, I've done some good things in my life. Perhaps I'll come back as a 
gate guard to my palace, or maybe even an advisor to one of the next kings. It doesn't matter, I'll come back anyway. And at, at that moment, some of, the, some of his captors came and grabbed him and took him to the head priest. Head priest looked at him and saw his missing finger and started jumping up and down and yelling and screaming. He said, you fools, we wasted six months preparing the paste for this guy. And you wasted on this rascal? Take him to the jungle. How can we offer him to the gods? He's not even complete. How can we offer an incomplete gift to the gods? Throw him out of the village and no one touch him. So that was that, and they took him and threw him out of the village into the jungle. And after wandering around for a while, a search party that had been dispatched for the king found him naked and covered in green paste. <laughs> and they covered him with a blanket and took him home. And finally, when he got to the palace, the first thing he did was to go and free his advisor. You're a wise man, he said, a man of, a man of God. I apologize for putting you in jail. But I have one question. Because I had a missing finger, I was saved. But why did you have to go to jail? The advisor asked him, how many times have we gone hunting together, my lord? Many times. You never leave my side. Had you not put me in jail, we would have gone hunting together, gotten lost together, gotten captured together. But because you have a missing finger, you would have been saved. However, I am complete, and I would have been sacrificed. I was not meant to be sacrificed, so you had to throw me in jail and go hunting alone. <laughs> we all have a pre-written destiny. It can be changed by meditating and doing sadhana. It can be erased and divine words can be inscribed instead. That's why me we meditate, chant God's name, and do what we do. The Touch of the Master The touch of the Master is what brought us here Through Maya's illusion, through doubt and fear We have followed him through this long dark night To awaken from the dream and face the light Now the time has come we must rise and stand and reverently take the reins from his steady hand. This is the birthday gift that would mean the most. From thousands of wounds sustained along the way, he is covered with scabs, yet he faces the fray with smiles and laughter and a thundering voice, driving us to the point where we have no choice except to stand strong with courage and win the fight for there is no substitute for victory, no greater delight. Victory is the birthday cheer he would like to toast. Deep in his breast, his patched up heart beats on, broken by the past, but sustained by the song of his longing and a deep love for his guru, which he has brought to us here, for me and you. We have heard that song, let us sing together now, let our voices rise, and in gratitude let us bow. Let gratitude be the birthday candle that we light. His beard is turned white, yet he still stands straight. Unbroken by time, he has shouldered its weight. He was attacked from the front and from the rear. He was attacked over there and over here. He has defended our dharma and upheld her grace and defeated her enemies who fell in disgrace. Now on this birthday, let us take the fight. Steady as stone and unbending as steel, mind like a computer and heart like a wheel. Compassion is the law that governs his life, no matter the conflict, no matter the strife. He has never given up nor let us down and he is ready again to walk another round. For this birthday, let us carry the weight. The touch of the master has brought us so far. He has illumined our path like a shining star. With dignity, he bears the torch of Guru's light. And with patience, he pushes us to get it right. 
the touch of the master, gift of the divine, has polished our steel. Now brightly let us shine. For this birthday, let us prove that we are great. Waiguruji ka khalsa, Waiguruji ki khateh.
little announcement. After we finish the court of the Guru's proceeding, I am inviting my most intimate friends and colleagues, brothers and sisters, and some Sikh of the Gurus to come to the guest house. We have a small ceremony today to meet and honor and feel our filth and our greatness into the unisonness of the consciousness. Also, we'll ask you for prayers because there's a great burden. which has fallen on the shoulders of BBG and she has to face the United Nations on a very typical controversial subject and unfortunately she is absolutely alone. So I hopefully feel she will come through and this is first time that the tough subject of United States and its children and the children of the world are being openly tackled. So naturally, prayer has the power of the courage. And I also would like people who have to see me and come from distance, they shall kindly after this meet me at the guest house. I'll be waiting. It is not possible to meet at the ranch because uh, these, uh, this stuff from there is being removed left and right. And we are very grateful to find Gurtirath Singh today, Helen Hati, and walked up to the Guru, I think. God must heal him perfect now, and his steadiness is needed now. And where are you, Gurtirath? Huh? I saw him here. Oh, thank God he's walking. I'm just, I'm very happy about it. I think this was seasoned with legs, as far as I know. <laughs> Gurbachan is also now, I think you are all right healed. Oh, he's walking, you see? I want to let you know. Gurbachan, you stand up too. <laughs> And it's my prayer that they should walk perfect and rest of the Guru should do miracle, that they should never feel handicapped in their life. And I am also glad to see Vaguru Kaur somewhere, she was here. And she came back and I think now our music will improve and hopefully we'll be doing the same. And I know many of you will be here, but particularly will ask your prayers because really, in 525 years, we are going to stand alone, absolutely, desperately, and infinitely with the Shabd Guru. And we are going to prevail on 525 years of the garbage. We are going to clean these pigs like with bulldozers and totally reorganize ourselves tirelessly. And this is one chance we want to deal it with a free-handedness, with the Guru's grace. And we know we are Americans and we know we are aggressive. And with that aggressiveness, we are going to let the whole world know that it cannot be true that God is outside the man. It's going to be big conflict with the priesthood of the whole world. And you must understand, India is the beginning and the middle and the end of the priesthood. You should understand that. And um, we are going to just uh, declare ourselves in that sense. And God knows what is happening, but I can tell you a few hints right now. There's not a one paper all over which is not putting any and every negativity what we are talking about. And we are, thanks to our kids and all those who joined, we have 
printed Shabd Guru and we are going to give it complimentary 5,000 copies free. And if need be, we will distribute them all over. Plus, Narendra Singh, poet, one of the most renowned poet of India, who came here, he has given permission to print his poems on you, which in time are the most beautiful poetry which has described human illumined life that you can be proud of. And he has allowed to print them free and distribute them. So we'll be doing that. So with the two essences, we are going and with the hope and prayer that we will be effective this time and bring the change which you need to change. As far as home is concerned, we are totally reorganizing and you must understand, I'm telling you once for all, that this all what is here has to be handed over gracefully and the graceful ones have to take over. In Khalsa, we do not recognize male or a female is a common gender. Therefore, we are not saying there's a weaker sex and there is a stronger sex, but technically speaking, all the authority and all the situation as it stands shall be shifted. And it's not a question of trial and triumph, it's a question of do mistake so that we can prosper and prosper others and give them an example that we are alert, we have the art to be smart, and we, with the Guru's words, are successful and bring everything to victory. Wherever our weaknesses are, it is not a negation or it is not something we should be afraid of or feel dreadful about. Wherever the weakness is, the best of the weakness is to face it, remove it, conquer it. The biggest mistake is when you find it and don't solve it. Therefore, I hope everything will be strong and steady and everybody will be in prayers and will show the strength we need to show. And at this time, I have also in the morning when I talk to her on the telephone, send prayers, and I think we should do it right. Why Guruji Ka Khalsa? Ramkani Mahela Dijananda, Ekumkar Sadhgur Prasad, Ananda Vyana Nimaya.
दास पाई हमारे दास करियो हमारे दास करियो आरे दास पाई राम दास करियो राम दास करियो राम दास करियो सच्ची साई एक यंग कार श्री वाहिगर जी की फते श्री बगौती जी सहाय वार श्री बगौती जी के पति शायद सुवीन प्रदम बगौती से मैंने कहे कर नानक लाइन दिया है फिर अंगद गुरु थे हमारे दास राम दास से होइ सहाय अर्जुन हर दास संपति शाह श्री गुरु गोविंद सिंह साहिब जी महाराज सब ताई होए सहाय दास संपति शाही दी ज्योत श्री गुरु ग्रंथ साहिब जी दे फरती दर दर दे अंदर रखे खास जीवो जी सतनाम 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 Banjam Pyarian Chan Sabzarian Chilean Muktian Hatia Java Vanichakai Dega Chilai Tegavahi Kiana Ditta Kita Tina Pyarian Sachiarindi Kamai Dardiandra Kay Kasa Jiba Oji Satana 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 O Kasa, let us think of all of those who have gone on the altar of sacrifice before us. Let us think of their these women, our sisters and mothers, who while clutching their children to their bosoms, threw themselves in front of the Indian Army tanks to protect the sanctity of the city Hari Manar Sahib. All of those who have gone before us in sweet resignation and to their last breath, Kalsaji Bhaji Satanam! Hail, hail Guru Ram Das, heal our teacher. Hail, hail Guru Ram Das, heal our teacher. Hail, hail Guru Ram Das, heal our teacher. O Guru, it is by thy grace and by thy blessing that we are here before thee in thy presence, in thy court. We ask that you please bless us with the strength and the maturity, the neutral mind, the stamina, the stability to serve this mission as our teacher has taught us how to serve. We ask that you allow us to grow strong and mature that we may ease the burden from his shoulders that we may carry it upon our own. We ask that you please bless us this day In the lives of several members of our Sangat, please bless the life of the Shaheen Justin Razahi, who was born yesterday in Boston. Please bless Liv Tarkar on her birthday today. We ask also that you please bless the safety and the sp speedy positive resolution for Guru Gungyan Singh and his family in this entire Dharma. We ask that you please bless our sweet son and daughter, Guru Sundri Kar and Guru Shamsar Singh, as they return to Virginia. May you guide and protect them ever. Please bless the two marriages today of Dhyan Kar and Amrit Singh and Harbhajan Singh and Ardas Kar. May they live their life in humble service to this mission, in service to the Sangat. Please also today is the 16th anniversary of the death of Guru Sangat Singh, the son of Kiran Kar and Guru Chandra Singh. Grant that his soul will continue to grow and become exalted and grant that he may be free of any longing for this earth. We also ask that you please bless the city Singh Sab, guide, guard, protect him, nourish him, and ease his pain. We ask that you please bless BBG on her journey in Beijing. We ask that you please bless all of them, the entire family, for all the sacrifices they have made on our behalf, and please ever keep them in the ecstasy of Wahiguru. Please bless the Guru Kalangar and the Guru Prashad, which has been placed before thee. As they sort of steel passes through it, may it Imbibe, imbue it with the strength and steel of charity kala so that all those who taste it may come to know the sweetness and strength of service to thee. Akuravaragata bulchik mafkarne, sirvate karachiraskarne, se piyarimil jinnam miliam teranam chitave, guru nanakanam charity kala tere vane sirvate kala. Wai guru ji ka khalsa, wai guru ji ki fateh. 
Agi abhe akar ki tabi chalai al panta Sabha sikam ka hukam hai guru mani al granta Guru granta ji mani al pargat gran ki day Jo prab ko mil boja hai ko ji shabhan mele Raj gire ka khalsa aki rahe na koe Kwaro e sabh milenge bachi shinen jo hoe Raj gire ka khalsa aki rahe na koe Kwaro e sabh milenge bachi shinen jo hoe And Guru, please forgive us for any errors or omissions we have made and please cover us and please cover all the personal and private prayers in the hearts of thy Sangat that they may be granted. Bole Chant Mehla Panjvan Garduja Ikonkar Satguru Prasad Gobinda Guna Gavana Lage Hadidanga Anadina Jage Hadidanga Gobinda Guna Gavana Lage Hadidanga Anadina Jage Hadidanga Jage Papa Bhage Mile Santa Piyadia Guru Charna Lage Padma Bhage Kaja Sagala Savadia Suna Sravana Bani Sahaja Jani Hadinama Japa Varda Bhage Binavanta Lanika Sadina Swami Jiyo Pindi Prabha Aage Anahati Shabda Suhava Sacha Mangala Har Jas Gava Kunagai Har Har Dukh Na Se Rehsa Oop Jai Man Gana Man Thaan Nirmal Deka Tarshin Naam Prabha Ka Mukh Bana Hoi Ren Saadu Prabha Aradu Apne Prabha Bhava Binavant Nanika Dayataro Sadahari Kunagava Gurmila Sagara Thariya Harcharna Japata Nisitariya Harcharna Dhyayi Sabafula Pai Mite Avan Jana Bhai Bhagata Subhai Harjapa Apne Prabha Bhava Japa Eka Alaka Pari Purana Tisabina Nahi Koi Binavantina Nikuru Parma Koya Jata Deka Tata Soi Patita Pavana Harinama Purana Santa Janake Kama Guru Santa Paya Prabha Diyaya Sagala Icha Puniya Ho taap bina se sada sar se prabh mele chiri vichunia 
Manasat ai vajivatai mano kadina visarai Binavante nanika satu kuru triraya sada baja jagati sarai Manasat ai vajivatai mano kadina visarai Binavante nanika satu kuru triraya sada baja jagati sarai Vai Guruji ka she has pronounced the Sri Guru Granth recitation absolutely correct. It's very difficult to recite in a rhythmic absolutely correct. I assign her to teach the same way to read Sri Guru Granth. And I shall order the Comptroller General of the Sikh Dharma to specifically discuss with me and a special prize will be awarded today at the ceremony when I'll meet her at the guest house. And uh, all those who she will teach to pronounce correctly and all those who will follow that system of recitation of Sri Guru Granth shall not only be blessed but shall be rewarded, blessed by the heavens, rewarded on the earth and that system is set. Hukum is very beautiful and it was expected after birthday anyway. I would like you to all now listen in the English translation. Vaheguruji ka khalsa. Vaheguruji ka khalsa. Chant, fifth channel of light. There is but one God. By the true Guru's grace, he is obtained. I sing the praise of my world Lord, and am night and day awake in my Lord's love. I sing the praise of my world Lord, and am night and day awake in my Lord's love. Awakening to the Lord's love, my sins hasten away, and I meet the dear saints. By attaching myself to Guru's feet, my doubts are dispelled, and all mine affairs are arranged. Hearing the Guru's hymns with my ears, I have realized the Lord. By great good luck, I have reflected over my God's name. Praise Nanak, I have entered the Lord's sanctuary, and my soul and body I surrender to my master. Beauteous is the celestial strain. Singing God's praise, true happiness wells up. Singing the Lord God's praise, my pain is dispelled, and great joy has welled up within my mind. Seeing the Lord's sight, my soul and body have become pure, and with my mouth I utter the Lord's name. Becoming the dust of the saint's feet and contemplating my Lord Master, I become pleasing to him. Supplicates Nanak, O God, show mercy unto me that I may ever sing thine praises. Meeting with the Guru, the world ocean is crossed. Meditating on my God's feet, I am emancipated. Remembering the Lord's feet, I have obtained all the fruits and my coming and going are ended. With loving adoration, I reflect over my Lord God and thus naturally become pleasing to Him. Contemplate thou the one invisible, infinite, and perfect Lord. Without Him there is not another. Praise Nanak, the Guru has dispelled my doubt. Wherever I see, there I find that Lord. Purifier of the sinners is the name of my God. It adjusts the affair of the holy men. Obtaining the saint Guru, I have reflected over the Lord, and all my desires are fulfilled. I am rid of the fever of pride, and am ever happy. I have now met my Lord, separated from me since long. My mind is at peace. I am <clears throat> congratulated, and it's within my heart. I forget not the Lord ever. Praise Nanak, the true Guru has firmly instructed me ever to meditate upon the Lord of the universe. My mind is at peace. I am congratulated, and within my heart I forget not the Lord ever. Praise Nanak, the true Guru has firmly instructed me ever to meditate upon the Lord of the universe. Wahi Guru Ji Ka Khalsa. Wahi Guru Ji Ki Fateh.
Go, Pindy, go, Pindy. 